Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you guys had a wonderful, thankful Thursday. You on top of the grass instead of underneath it. You get to enjoy yet another day. You woke up in the land of the living. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for fighting battles last night while we were sleeping, while our body was at rest. God was still fighting on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. Oh, today is Faithful Friday. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is faith without works is dead. That's what we're going to talk about on Faithful Friday, that faith without works is dead. So, as I was sitting here thinking about the word for the day, the Holy Spirit was talking to me about faith. And he was telling me how, um, how to activate it, right? So I was thinking, you know, how you activate a miracle is you have faith. That's the how you get a miracle. You, you, you have to have faith to activate a miracle. How do you activate faith? By works. Right? The Bible says faith without works is dead. So you have to have works in order to create faith. That's what activates faith. So what I do believe is that God doesn't answer any prayer without giving us a command for it to be manifested, right? There's no prayer that he answers without giving you a command for it to be manifested. It's, it's, a, it's something you must do on your part. This relationship with God is a companionship. He needs you to move on your part in order for him to do his part. Like it's a together, we're in this together, we're a team. God said, I walk with you. I will never leave or forsake you. So you're a team. So there's a part that you must play. And he said, I, I, I walk with you. So that means that you have to walk. You can't stand still unless he commands you to. But then again, like I said, God doesn't answer any prayer without a command. So sometimes his command is to stand still. But this is to let you know that there's a part that you must play. There's something that you must do. In order to activate the faith, in order to activate the miracle, there's something that you must do. You must be in a companionship with God, that it not just be one-sided. That you can't just go to him and pray and, th and then walk away and think that it's all done. No, there's something that you must do on your part. There's a part that you play in your life. This is why it's free will, because it's something that you must do. When you go through the stories in the Bible, you'll see that everyone had to play a part. Everyone had something to do. Things didn't just happen. They had to activate it. Right? In the Bible, there was rituals. They, they did all type of rituals, all type of sacrifices. They did things to move God. Again, this relationship with God is a companionship. We're, we're in this together. God is telling you, we in this together. It's not that you do it by yourself. But you do have a part to play. So today we're talking about faith without works is dead on Faithful Friday. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about what you have to do. The part that you have to play. You have choices, you have free will. You don't get to just lay it at his feet and walk away from it and think that it's going to be done. When God answers prayers, he gives you a command. He gives you something to do in order to activate what it is you're asking him to do. This is not a one-sided thing. God doesn't just orchestrate everything without you playing a part, without you making the choices to move you into the position that he needs you to be in. He don't just throw you anywhere. You have to make the choice to do it. You have to make the choice to decide on if you're going to listen to God or if you're going to do your own thing. You better be glad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Faithful Friday, um, 
that's really what I just wanted to talk about because I, I, I know so many people do that. So many people go to God and they, they just say, well, I prayed about it. You know, I, I, I gave it to God. I prayed about it. Now I'm just waiting for him to do something. I'm sure that when you prayed about that, if you would have sat there long enough, if you would have sat in, in his glory, you would, would have sat and had a conversation with him and not just tell a story to him. If you would have just sat there and had a conversation, you would have hear, you would have heard what he had for you to do. Because you do have something to do. You do have a part to play. This is not just God's story. This is your story. He says it's our story because if he said, I will never leave or forsake you, this is our story. And in any story, each character has a part to play. Otherwise, it's just one person's story, right? So you have something to do. So again, in order to activate a miracle, if that's what you're standing in need of, if you're asking God to perform a miracle in your life, in order to activate that miracle, you must have faith, right? In order to activate that faith, you must do works. The Bible talks about those in so many parts of the Bible, so many scriptures in the Bible. You can talk about, you can pick out what people had to do in order to activate the faith, in order to activate the miracle. You cannot have one without the other. This is why I named my kids, and I tell them that all the time. My, my daughter name is Miracle, and my... Um, my first daughter name is Miracle. My youngest daughter name is Faithful. And I tell them all the time, you can't have a miracle without faith. So it was, I had to name my second daughter Faith because I couldn't have a miracle without faith. You guys have a great day. I love y'all. No, you going with us. You you gonna miss out on your brother's um tournament? That's that shit on Saturday. Yes. Oh. We gotta go cheer them on. Make sure they win this game. Ah ah ah. Get y'all other papers too. That you always leaving in my car. Um, good morning, Walter. Good morning. Good morning, anyone or everyone that decided to tune in. I appreciate you so much. I do. Um, the only one thing I do ask that you do is please like and share. Please like and share the videos. Um, not everyone knows what it takes to activate a miracle or to what they need to do to get that miracle to manifest. Everybody doesn't know. They know that it takes faith, but they don't know that um, there's something that they have to do, that this relationship with God is just that. It's a relationship. It's not one-sided. So share this with somebody so that they know that it's not them. <laughs> it's not them. They have something that they need to do in the relationship with um, God. Just with any relationship, you have to play a part. If you're in a relationship, uh, a humanly relationship, let's say, you know, mother-daughter relationship or a father-son relationship or a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, you have to do something in order for that relationship to keep going. In order for it to grow, each one of you have a part to play. And the same thing holds true with God. The same thing holds true with your spirit. You have to continue to do things in order to for it to grow. In order for it to be activated, you have to do things to activate your faith. You have to do things to activate your miracle. You don't just get to sit there and say, well, I prayed about it. That's, that is an action. But that's just words. What are you doing about what you're asking God to do? Are you moving into position? Are you making sure that you make the right choices to be surrounded by the right people so that when I am um, when I am about to receive my miracle, that I'm in position? I'm not standing out of position. I'm in position. I heard God. God told me to stand here. God told me to do this. Because God still speaks. We serve a living God. If you're living, you're talking. You're communicating if you're living. Whether it's by word of mouth or by body language, something about you is communicating if you're living. 
And that's the type of God that we serve. He still lives today. He's still communicating with us. He's still talking to us. He's still guiding you. And like I said before, God doesn't answer any prayer without giving a command or instructions on how to get that prayer to be manifested in your life. So again, today on Faithful Friday, what we're talking about is faith without works is dead. That you can't be in a one-sided relationship and think that it's going to you're actually serving God that you're actually um, going to see God move when you're just telling God a story are you waiting to hear what he has to say about it are you taking that time to meditate and hear God's voice and then once he tells you what it is to do are you being obedient and doing what he tells you to do that's the hardest thing, right? Obedience. And God honors obedience more than he does sacrifice. So many of us say, well, I fast or I gave up this or I did that. That's great. But was it obedient to the word of God? Is that what God commanded you to do? Did you do what God asked you to do? Even those of us who are parents, we know that our kids, we will reward them as long as they're obedient. As long as they're doing what we ask them to do, They'll never have to worry about us saying no to them. Regardless if they're going around cleaning up the house all day or, you know, doing what, uh, you know, um, making sure that you good, giving you stuff, you know, mind you okay. All oh, that's nice. But did you do everything that I asked you to do? Were you obedient to the things that I commanded of you? Those are the things that matter because when he's telling us to do something it's out of love and it's because he already knows your beginning from your end right he already knows your beginning all the way to your end he knows everything so when he tells you to move a certain way it's because he knows what's best for you he already knows where he's taking you he already knows your purpose So are you listening and being obedient? I know it's hard because there's been moments where, you know, like God, God tells you to do something and you just like, mm, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to do that. And some of, some of us, we really don't do it and we end up in these cycles, repeating the same mistake. Wondering why we keep being in this cycle because we're not listening. We're not being obedient. And we're going to keep on going through that cycle until we learn that lesson. So today on Faithful Friday, we're just talking about faith without works is dead. How do you activate faith? Works. Right? You're standing before God asking him to perform a miracle. You're, you're standing before God asking him to address some famine in your life. And famine is not, when we think of famine, we think of food or... Um, you know, material things, but family can be anything in your life. If you're if you're without, you know, a husband or a wife, you're, or you're feeling like you don't have love, that's a famine. Um, if you're feeling like you don't have, um, you you didn't have a father growing up, that's a famine. You went without. Famine is to go without. So if you're asking God to move on your behalf on a famine, guess what? First, you want to see a miracle be um, performed. You have to have faith, and in order to get that faith you have to have works you have to do something hey mommy have a great day babe love you here you <laughs> you sure you don't want me to have this bag it goes in my outfit no mm -mm. oh okay my book bag ain't as big as yours you sure you got too much stuff in your book oh. Ooh, my allergies starting to bother me have a good day how did we end up late man i'll be on it y'all i'll be booking it let me understand how I am still in the plate. So I need to be doing a walking this thing on track. Um, but anyways. Um, I want to speak, you know, this is my lesson too because um, really when the Holy Spirit talks to me, 
he's talking to me about me, right? And I share it with y'all because I know that I'm not the only one, that I'm not the only one that needs to hear this word. Um, I was really pleading with God yesterday and I was like, Lord, I, I really don't want to do these lives anymore. I feel like I've reached the point where this this is enough, right? I don't I don't want to do this anymore. I don't see. Um, to be honest, I, I said I don't see the purpose. I don't see or understand why I have to keep doing these. And um, and I was like, Lord, I'm. I, I'm just gonna give up on this, you know. I'm. I think I'm gonna come on tomorrow and just tell everybody this is gonna be my last live, um, and that I need to take out time for me. That's the excuse that I was giving myself that I need to take out time for me. I need to heal um, in some places. I need to get myself together. And if God was bringing back to my memory, you know the certain people, the few people that has come to me and said, you know what, your lives touched, you know, they helped me um, get to a certain place in life, or I listen to you every day, and, you know, but, you know, when you're going through something, you don't really hear those, those people that you touch, right, or when you look at the number of people that tune in, and you start to feel like really no one's listening to you, right? Or you start to look at, um, we live in a society where everybody is, you're valued on the number of likes. So you're like, if if nobody's liking these videos, I'm, I must not be reaching nobody, Lord. I feel like this is a waste of time. Like no one's really listening. Um, I'm being very transparent with you because I want you to understand how this this battle with, with God, this, I mean, not this battle with God, this walk with God, can be a tug of war sometimes right it can be um it can be like moments where you're just like okay god this is enough for me like i've, I've got to a point where um i don't want to go any further than here because it's, it's the human flesh like we when something gets tough for us we some of us want to give up we want to move on to the next thing right and especially now when we look into uh, we're living in a society where what's trending is what makes you valuable to people. Um, and if you're not trending, you feel you kind of lose your value in yourself. And this is why it's very important for you to have self-worth, for you to understand who you are, right? And for you to stay connected to God and not to people, right? And if God tells you that it's time to let go of certain things, that you be obedient to that. So as I'm, I'm talking to God about this, I'm like, God, okay, I don't... I'm tired of this. I, I don't I don't want to get up and do this no more. Like I'm not in a place, right? So I had to start telling myself was like really psyching my mind out was like, hey, we we didn't get here by accident. Right? You didn't get to this place. Every every place that God has brought you thus far was due to your obedience to doing the lies. So you giving up on it now means that you don't want to see the open doors. You don't want to see what else he has in store. You want to you want to stop now. This is what I'm telling myself. But then I started talking to God. I was like, God, I don't know if this is really opening doors. I don't really know what this is doing because I'm not feeling today like I want to keep going forward. I'm not feeling like I'm seeing you perform miracles. I'm not feeling like um, my faith is as strong as it was when I first started. I'm not feeling as if I should keep doing this. If you if you notice, I keep saying I'm not feeling because I want you to focus on the feeling part of it. And that's the part that is real dangerous for us. Is if we move and operate on just how we feel and not on hearing God so that he can direct our paths and lead us in doing our part, being obedient. Had I not been obedient to this, these, doing these lives, I wouldn't have the podcast that I have. 
I don't believe that I would be in the job that I'm in. And see, that's the thing that kind of really had me in a in, in a bad place is the job that I'm in because I, I see so much in this job and I see the bad in people. And I don't like it. Because remember I told you, I've always been a person that sees positivity. I've always been a person that sees the good in everybody. And, and a lot of times that's broken my heart because I, even in bad people, I've seen the good in them. And I moved and operated on what I saw in them instead of what they were portraying to me. So now I'm in a field where I see the, the, the ugliness of people. And it's breaking my heart. And I'm like, God, nobody's listening to what I'm saying to them. Nobody is hearing what I'm saying, but you keep commanding me to get up and do this every day. Nobody, nobody is using this. They're not hearing this. I'm speaking to deaf ears. So this is what kind of had me in this place. It wasn't because of something that was going on in my life. And this is really going to make me emotional because like I said, it was breaking my heart to see the ugly of people. And I didn't want to see it. So I'm saying, God, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I don't want to talk to people because it's falling on deaf ears. No one's liking these videos. No one is really listening. This is what I, I'm telling myself. I'm feeding myself this negative thing because of I've been exposed to this negative environment, the ugliness of people. And then I had to pray. I said, Lord, please don't change my heart. Please don't let this fall upon me. And I said, God, okay, it's the reason why you brought me here. It's the reason why you're exposing me to this. You, you obviously saw that I was strong enough to endure this. I was strong enough to be able to see this. So what is it that you want for me to do? God said, keep being obedient. Keep being obedient. See, because I take a moment to hear God. I, keep, I take a moment for him to instruct me on what it is to do instead of me just moving and operating on what I feel. Because what I feel says, you know what? I don't want to do this. This doesn't feel good anymore. My heart is broken. And again, it's not, I want you to understand, it's not something that I'm going through per se because I'm in a good place in my life. I'm, I'm in a very good place. I finally come to a place where I'm comfortable with me, right? I'm comfortable with um, my relationship with God that I can talk to him the way I do. I'm comfortable with the direction and the path that he has me on. But my heart was just broken because of the things that I've been exposed to and the, the, the ugliness that I've seen in people. And as I started to say, God, is this worth it? Are people really listening? I, I started to go through, um, again, as the world does, I started to go through my videos and, and see that, you know, it was very few likes. It was, you know, very few people that was watching the videos. And then when I went on TikTok, I saw my videos there and it's like millions of hundreds of people was watching it but nobody was liking the videos and I was like see God no no one's hearing me no one's listening I did what you told me to do and, and no one's moving and God was like why are you paying attention to what it looks like why are you paying attention to what you see when I told you that I'm not that type of God. That you have to serve me with faith and understand that it's not always going to look like how you want it to look. That it is moving and operating the way I want it to move. And God was reminding me, I told you he was reminding me of the, the few people that did come to me and say, you know what? Your videos helped me. What you were saying hit me. I understood what you were saying and I, I that's where I'm at in my life. And those few people was only one I needed to hear. That, that was the only encouragement, encouragement I needed was that somebody, 
I sparked somebody, I touched somebody, somebody heard what God had to say. And God was like, it, don't keep looking at the numbers. And it's hard to do because we live in a world that that's what matters. It's hard not to fall back, but God tells us that he pulled us out from the world. We're not supposed to be doing the things the way that the world does it. Right? So on Faithful Friday, we're talking about faith without works is dead. And I chose that because I understood that I could not see God move until I was obedient, until I stayed obedient. And sometimes staying obedient doesn't feel good. It doesn't look right. And then talking about that feeling thing again, we we move and operate a lot of us because a, a lot of situations we get into because of we moved and operated based on our feelings. And how many of you know that feelings change from one moment to the next? We leave a relationship because we felt a certain way and then tomorrow we're back in that relationship forgetting how we felt yesterday. because we moved off our feelings and God is telling us don't operate that way. I know it doesn't feel good. Discipline doesn't. <laughs> I don't know of one person who has been disciplined and felt like it felt good. But when you're being disciplined, it's for your good. The Bible said all things will turn out for the good of those who, who love me. Not just believe who love me. Remember we talked about what you do when you love somebody. Anything. You'll do anything. Love is the strongest emotion. I believe, I would truly believe that that's the only emotion that God wants us to operate in. Is love. He doesn't say the other emotions doesn't come. Because if you look in the Bible, Jesus was angry. So it, he doesn't say that those emotions are, emotions are not going to come. But he wants us to operate in love when those emotions come. Combat those emotions that goes against God with love. And this is what keeps me going and doing these lives. Not just my love for God. Because I do love him. And the fact that I get up doing these every day show how much I love him. But my love for people. My love for people. As, as I was, like I said, in the position that I'm in right now, I see the ugliness in people. And all I can think about is, Lord, what brought them to this place? How, how can we help them so they don't have to hurt like this? Right? So they don't have to respond to things like this. How how can we do this? And I'm like, Lord, like I said, at that moment, I was feeling like, I don't want to do this. These people are ugly. Their hearts is ugly. I don't want to do this. Right? And God, he reminded me of my ugliness. Of my brokenness. I maybe didn't take it as far as some, but there is some ugly in you. Lord said, there's some ugly in you. There's some things that I had to work out of you that I'm still working out of. So who are you to say because of what they did is any better than what you did? No sin is greater than the other. He reminded me of that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. So let me, let me see what you guys are talking about. Just give me one moment. Um, let me get to a light. Okay. Um, Walter says, um, you preaching really good. Let the church say, man, amen. I feel your spirit in pain. Oh my God. Um, Um, and it says, 
Um, I've been where you are. Don't get weary in well doing. In due season, you will reap what you sow if you faint not. Praise God. I needed that, Walter. Yes. Understand if you touch just one person, believe you are making a difference. I look forward to your morning word. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. Thank you. I really need that encouragement. I do. Um, and, and that's what God was, was reminding me of, too, when he kept saying, like, it's serving a purpose. You, you're reaching somebody. You know, you're reaching, regardless if people like it or not, people are listening. And that's what I started to see was like um, in the morning when I do this, um, this is me being very transparent with you guys, very transparent because I just want you to understand um, that I'm human, right? That this walk is not something that's, um, that's, that's superhuman, like it's like a superpower or nothing, like I'm human, like I, I have these the same emotions that you have, like you know, I want to be liked, I want to be loved you know what I mean, so this is when I'm looking in here and I see like um, maybe one person tuning in and I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm talking to one person, I could have called that person you know, I didn't have to get on here and do these lives I could have just called the person and we could have talked about you, like, you know, that's, that's really how I was feeling but God was like they're watching <laughs> they're, they're listening and your word is going to reach the people that I needed to reach you don't get to be the judge of who it reaches and who it doesn't God will check you <laughs> he will check you he will keep you from being in your mess if you're walking with him if you're trusting with him because you got so many people who pretend to be lovers of God who have played their part well and, and will fool people into believing that they really are believing and trusting in God. But when you truly are connected with God, he'll check you. <laughs> he, he like a father. He'll let you know, like, hey, mm -mm. no. Who, who told you that you have to be, the? you have to uh, count the numbers? Who told you that you have to determine who's being touched and who's not? Who, who told you that? Real and I'm like, okay, God, I'm, mm, you know better than me. Yelling and all that stuff. So it definitely was a scene that could not have been written better. You know. So today on Faithful Friday, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the prayer. I believe I've said enough. Um, so our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil forever and ever. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord God, for going ahead of us and preparing this day, Father God. We thank you for forgiving, our, forgiving us of our sins and um, casting those sins into the lake of forgiveness, never again bringing it to your attention or mine. Father, we thank you, Lord, for placing forgiveness in the hearts of those who we may have sinned against, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for touching us, Lord God, and keeping us in our right mind, Father God, helping us to stay obedient. Lord God, remind us who you are. Remind us that this, this relationship with you is a companionship, that we're in this together, Lord God, and that that means that I have a part to play. Remind us that we play a part, that we, could, we stop saying what they did or what he did or what she did, but we start to point the finger at ourselves. We start to to point the thumbs at ourselves and say what can we do what did we do what in us is broken what in us needs to be healed so that we portray to people a healed presentation we portray to people a, a specimen that is approved by you lord Father God, help us to hear your voice, Lord God. Help open our ears to hear you. Open our hearts to receive you, Father God, so that we're not walking in this in a one-sided relationship, that we're not just telling you a story, but we're waiting to hear what you have to say about the story, that we allow you to play a part in our story. Help us, Lord. Father, because we can't do this alone. Lord, you said in your word that it's not good for man to be alone. You also said that you will never leave or forsake us. So help us to feel that presence in every area of our lives and everything that we do and everything that we say. Help us to speak in a manner that includes you. 
Help us to move in a manner that includes you. So that when people come in contact with us, they're coming in contact with you, Lord. Help us to be so close to you that people don't see Tara. People don't see Walter. People don't see um, anyone that's on this slide, but they see you. They see you. They come in contact with you, Father. Help us to do our part so that we can activate the faith, so that we can activate the miracle. Anything that we have standing before you, Lord, help us to do our part so that we can do according to what you would have us to do. So that we're not leaning on our own understanding, that we're not doing it by ourselves, Lord God, but we're doing it according to your will and your way, Father. Help us to hear what it is that we are to do and to move in the, the manner that we are to move. Lord God, help us to take our feelings out of it. Help us to move and operate on the emotion of love. In the name of Jesus, Father, I ask these prayers and bless this name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. So guess what? Guess what? I love y'all. It's nothing you could do about it. God loves you more. So just might as well accept it and move on. Oh, accept that and move on. You got somebody that loves you, loves you, and is praying for you. Is praying for you. I'm praying for you guys. I'm praying for you. So pray for me. Show that love back by praying for me. Please like and share these videos. Somebody needs to hear this word today. Please get it out. So I'm super excited this weekend. I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Saturday is my son's um, basketball tournament. He's been doing really, really well. Um, I really want them to have this victory. I really do. I've been praying for it. <laughs> I really think he needs to have this victory. Um, so I'm super excited about that. And then my daughter's ballet this weekend. I'm, I'm going to be super busy. And then I have a super um, uh, person on the podcast. He's a very positive young man, Devon D. You see, I share his videos. He's giving you the game for free. He's going to be on the podcast at 1230. So please tune into that um, uh, on Saturday. So I have a very busy day on Saturday. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and what else do I have going on? Oh. Another thing, I'm probably going to post um, my daughter's mentorship program is having a tea party. So you ladies, um, come on out, support the tea party. Um, or men, it doesn't matter. You know, this is all to support the, the young ladies. The name of her mentorship is Pretty Girls Are Educated. So we're promoting um, education in girls, right? And we're letting them know that they're pretty. You know, it's okay to be educated and still be pretty, right? <laughs> so support the cause. The tickets are $40, $40 to come to it. So um, I would appreciate if you support that. Um, I'll probably post it on there um, for you guys to um, take part into that. Um, and again, I thank you guys for loving on me back. Um, I thank you for coming in here and listening to me each morning. That support right there, that's letting me know um, that you believe in the cause that I'm doing. That's keeping me motivated. That's reminding me when I have those moments where I want to give up, that I am touching people. I am helping people. That there is a purpose in why God commanded me to do what he commanded me to do. Um, and there's a purpose in my obedience, right? So you guys have a wonderful and blessed day. Um, uh, be safe on this weekend. Please be safe. Please, please be safe. Like I said, this job is really showing me the ugliness of people and I don't like it. So I really want to um, stay in prayer for each other and I really want you guys to stay safe, right? Stay safe. Think ask God even before you go somewhere ask God God is this where you want me to go is this where somewhere you need for me to be because God is if you seek his guidance he's not going to lead you into destruction right he's not going to lead you somewhere that is going to hinder you he said his thoughts towards you are good so even before you go somewhere if a friend family I don't care invite you somewhere God is it okay if I go there <laughs> you know before you even say yes you know what yeah I'll be there say God you know, they just invited me, you know, it's okay to tell a person, you know, let me get back to you on that. It's okay to say that. Okay, God, is it okay? Is that somewhere you want me to be? Is it safe for me to be there? Are the people that's going to be there somebody that you want me around, that you want in my sacred space? Remember, we talked about that this week. This is my sacred space. Is this somebody, the space you want me to be in, that I should let the people be in that? So everything, pray about everything, you guys, everything. So... I love y'all. Have a safe weekend. If God willing, I'll talk to you guys on Monday. Bye.